So Newfish launched these a couple of weeks ago, the Zip Elastic Beads. Now, ever since I did a video, God, it must be five or six years ago, I remember it was on a GoPro in my bedroom, you know, in my old office, a real rough video about me using the bead elastic connector method. I've had so many questions on that video asking me what beads to use. At the time I was using the Drenon beads, uh, how to do it, why I'm going to do it. So I thought I'm going to do a refreshment version, 2023 version, using these beads which have been designed for that very job. Also, why I think I've started to err back towards Dacron for a few situations, and I'm going to say why in a minute. But if you want to learn more about the bead elastic connection, stick around. So like I say, I did a video, like I say, five, six years ago, explaining about the bead uh, elastic connection method. And it is just a brilliant, brilliant way to connect your rig to your elastic. Basically, all it is, is a knot in the elastic, the bead on the uh, elastic then covers the knot and the rig uh, connection, stops it going inside the pole. It's direct, it's light, it's simple, it's compact, it doesn't tangle. It helps you hit more bites when shallow fishing, which is another one reason why I use it. It's just a brilliant, brilliant way of doing it. And another benefit to it is, say this elastic, for example, has been in for several months. If I can see any wear or tear around the knot, I just quickly take an inch off, tie a new double, hand, double overhand knot in it, snip it off, and away I go back on a fresh elastic. So it's a great way of monitoring the wear and tear on your elastic. It's a brilliant method, and like I say, We've done these beads for this exact reason. So you've got the mini, the small, the medium, and the large. Whichever one you need to use is just brilliant. I must admit, I tend to use the smaller ones, the mini and the small. I love having a really discreet setup. So like I say, that's the, the small there, not the mini. And the only difference is, is the actual bore size, the physical size is the same, but that, that's a lovely little bead that. It does the job exactly what you need to do. It's a great method of attaching your rig, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's show you how to use the beads, because like I say, you can use them for the direct connection method, which is ultimately what a lot of us prefer, but you can also make Dacrons as well. Like say here, I've made myself my own little Dacron connector using them beads, and you just need a couple of components to do that, but it's very, very simple. But for first and foremost, let's talk about the direct elastic connection method, which I know a lot of you have been asking about. So let's get a bead. I've got a bit of a bulk. I know I found some here, I found some. I've got the yellows, which I like, and I've got some elastic in here, some white zip. Here she is. Got a bit of an odds and ends. I'll tell you what I like to do, because I'm tight. When I strip elastic out of my normal kits, my two-piece kits, I actually save it and then whack it in my short kit at a later day. <laughs> because obviously you, the, most of the wear and tear is around the tip end, so I can just get rid of that bit and it's perfect for me other kits. So I always keep my elastic, that's how tight I am. It's the Yorkshireman coming out in me. Need some scissors. So I've got my bag of tricks here. So we've got some scissors, we've got our elastic. You do need a, a diamond eye threader, uh, a gate latch needle works as well, but you need a fine one because the bore on these bees is very, very small. So I prefer a diamond eye. This is one of ours, but you can use any. Let's get a bead out. Let's say, I like to use the smaller beads, so either the small or the mini. Um, and I've got to be honest, even up to green zip, I'm using the yellow one. But a lot of you might find that a bit fiddly. So the bead itself has got a taper. You want the thin end in towards your bush, which means you've got to go from the, with your threader, you've got to go from the wide end through to the narrow end, if that makes sense, not the other way around for this to work. So take your threader, pass it through. It takes a bit of getting through because it's the bore is incredibly narrow. And there you go. So you've got, you've gone through the, the fat end of the bead out of the narrow end and it's on there. Next, it's so simple. Next, pass your elastic through the diamond eye, like so, and then pull your bead onto the elastic like that. So you've got your elastic, you've got your bead, all on there. Now, whenever you're doing anything, just give it a little, little moist. And the last thing you want to do is burn the, burn the elastic and potentially damage it. One trick I like to do when it comes to moving beads and stuff is stretch your elastic. 
and then move it with your lips so it moves on like a stretch elastic it just prevents you from unnecessarily rubbing it like i say so let's just move it out of the way and then the knot that your rig is going to sit behind is very simple it's just a a granny knot so i like to go through two even three times so but we'll go through two on this white now moisten that and pull it down. Now it's important not to pull the life out of that. You could pull it right down. And this is one reason why a few occasions just lately, this hasn't been my preferred method, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So don't pull it right down. And then there you go. Pull the bead back up and the knot will sit inside the bead lovely. So as soon as you need to tie, attach your rig, simply loop it around that knot, pull the bead down and everything's enclosed in that. Now. I like to just leave a little two or three mil tag just so I can pull the, the knot out of the bead and that is it. That is as simple as it is. And like I say, because of how I use my elastic with the zip adjuster puller bead at the other end where I'd leave a little bit, I've done a video, I'll leave the, com the link up here. Um, because I like to leave several inches hanging out, I've always got a bit of spare to retie this knot. And it's just a case of if I think, oh, that's a little bit touch and go, I'll just take an inch or two off, retie my knot, and then I'm good to go again. I'm on fresh elastic. It's a brilliant way of doing it. It's very direct. Like I say, I've mentioned it until I'm blue in the face that I've done slow-mo footage of shallow fishing where I've literally seen Dacrons go over, the bites missed before, uh, and the, the fish just aren't hooking themselves as efficiently as they do with this because that is against your pole tip and it's donking. There's no moving parts. It's just straight onto your pole tip and I've seen it with my own eyes slow motion footage how much of a difference that makes um, so for me for shallow fishing that is the only way it's a brilliant brilliant method that's it all I do is just um, take the loop of my rig pass the main line through it and then pull it down nice and tight behind that knot and then cover it up with that bead as simple as that like I say I use the yellow or the pink um, and then from a the blue zip because it's such a thick elastic, I have to go up to the large bead and use that. So brilliant, brilliant system. One that I absolutely love, especially for shallow fishing. However, I might have been wrong. <laughs> I do think shallow fishing is the ultimate and I've been using it for everything for five years now. I haven't put a Dacron on for five or six years. However, just recently, I've had it two times where I'm fishing in the edge and I've got everything bottomed out and I mean everything bottomed out and I'm hanging on for dear life and my rig's come off the whole rig's gone and it's not broke and I've come back to my knot and because this knot is quite a small knot the rig's come off so under extreme pressure it's let me down it's gone over and it's put that seed of doubt in my mind about it now, I could just put a bigger knot in. I could do that, no problem. I could put a little crow's foot on, perhaps. Um, I could just make the knot a little bit bigger. All those things are what I will do with my short kits. But I must admit, for carp fishing, and I'm, I stress for carp fishing when I'm bagging on proper carp. For F1s, I will always use this. When I'm F1 fishing, that is the only way for me. I think it makes a massive difference. But for carp, they're a little bit more lenient with their <laughs> bite times. And I think you can get away with a Dacron. And I think it is just that touch more secure when it comes to playing these big carp. Decided to go back to using Dacrons for my carp fishing. And I must stress it's my carp fishing. It's not my F1 fishing. It's when I'm using my green, my blue zip, when I'm pushing my tackle to its limit, you know, I'm hanging on for dear life. I'm using f thicker lines, I think is the problem. And I just, there's two occasions where my rig's gone past my bead. I just, it's haunting me, it's haunting me. So I've put a couple of Dacrons on and I've started to move back to my Dacrons. And beautifully, you can do it with these beads and you get 10 in a pack for a £2.50 or whatever it is. So you're getting loads and loads of beads to do your Dacrons with. And as you can see there, it makes a beautiful little Dacron connector in fact. So it's lovely in the bee, in the uh, bush. My little piece of Dacron stuck out there. And for this heavy duty carp fishing that I'm doing at the minute, you know, I'm often using 021 straight through, 022 straight through to a size 10. I'm bagging late in the match. I just don't know, in my head, that's a little bit more secure. 
don't mind admitting I was wrong. I think I just, I like this now for me uh, carp fishing. And I still think that that bead method is the ultimate for your shallow fishing. I've, 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 there's no, I can't argue otherwise. But for my carp fishing, going back to Dacrons for now. I'll probably change my mind in a few months. Now you do need a couple of things if you're gonna do this. Not least the Dacron itself. You can buy Dacron connectors, of course you can, but this is quite a cheap way of doing it. And it costs a, like a 20 meter bit of coated braid. It's gonna last you forever. We're only using a couple of inches at a time. Uh, so you need a, a nice bit of coated braid. This is N-Trap Soft, purely because it's what I had um, from a bit of carp fishing I'd done. Um, but I quite like the fact that it's got a little bit of movement in it. I don't, I think that's super stiff. Um, Braid is quite harsh on your elastic, that super stiff Dacron, but don't get me wrong, it sits nice on your pole, but this soft, like, end trap soft feels quite nice. You want a loop tire, this is a ringer's one, I like that because it's got a really small end, and I'll show you exactly why. So we're gonna use the loop tire to make ourselves a lovely little Dacron of about a centimeter. So take your um, loop tire on the small end, pass it through there. It's a little bit fiddlier than doing it with mono, got to be said pass it through there and then you get a lovely little sort of one centimeter dacker on there and then we're going to chop that off like I say how many be how many dacrons am I going to get out of this spool of braid I mean loads in it so I'm left with that lovely little one centimeter doodah now we just got to get the dacron onto the onto the elastic I'm going to head back to my trusty piece of white here that I've got. So we've got the bead on and the bead is exactly the same as how we've done it for the direct method. So we've got the bead already on the elastic, narrow end on onto the elastic first, okay? So you've got the wide end pointing away from the elastic, if that makes sense, away from the pole tip. Again, move that down, because we don't want that interfering. And just trim that off. And then what we're gonna do it's tied like a, a complicated granny knot. And I found this knot works ever so well. So pass the Dacron on there. I'm just gonna move that bead down a little bit more. So we've got the piece of Dacron on there. We're gonna make a loop like that. We're gonna twist it once, twice. So I've got my loop and I've twisted it twice. And then we're gonna go back through with the tag end and then pull it down. So you've got a, I don't know what the knot's called, but it's like a complicated granny knot, I suppose, because you've got that double twist in there. And I've just found, and it's their ship showed me ages ago, and I just found it's a very, very, it keeps everything in line, which is nice, but it's a very, very secure knot. And as hard as I pull that zip, it's never, ever, ever gonna, gonna slip. The good thing about zip is, you can pull it down tight. And as long as it's moist, or lubed up, like if you use like a Jura slip lube, something like that, it, it won't ever burn or damage. So there you go, simple as that. So it's the same setup, but I'm just putting a Dacron on. Pull the bead down, and as you can see, I've got a little bit of a tag end there. I'm just gonna trim that back. I quite like having a couple of mil showing. Just allows me to uh, keep an eye on it. And there you go, got a lovely little Dacron. And like I say, you get 10 beads in a pack, so you're getting 10 of these. Buy yourself a spool of that, it's gonna last you all your life. And there you go. So we've got a Dacron option there from them beads. You've got the direct option with these beads, which is the same. Word of warning when you're using Dacrons. Now, obviously I buy water a lot. By that I mean I buy commercial fisheries a lot, a lot. You know, I'm out filming a couple of times a week. I'm fishing myself. How often do you find a rig in the edge? Because obviously when I'm filming, I'm looking for angles. I'm often going in like the corners of the lake where the wind's blowing in, trying to get nice and low so I get a lovely shot across the lake, anything like that. So I'm always finding floats and stuff in the edge and the amount of rigs I see in the edge where there's just a Dacron connector attached to the rig with no elastic to it is frightening. And that's obviously where the Dacron or the, the knots failed, not the, the elastics failed under the bead. And because, whereas with the direct bead method, you, every time you put your rig on, you're checking your elastic. With Dacron, it's easy to become overlook it because it's not visible. So make sure I'm not going to say every time because I'd be lying that I said I did it every time. But every few weeks or every few sessions or whatever, if you can do it every time, even better. But every few weeks, just pull the bead back, have a little look, 
again, because I leave my um, elastic out and the, the zip puller bead at this end, the, the base end, I've got a little bit more to play with. Um, I can retie that Dacron on no problem. So just be mindful of that. If it looks like it's got anywhere or tear at all at the Dacron end, you've got to change it because it will let you down. Pull that up tight and you've got a lovely little Dacron connector there. Brilliant, brilliant way of doing it. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. So there you go. Two ways. Uh, I promised I'd do this video like an updated version for 2023. You've got the zip elastic beads that are out in the shops now. You can do the, the direct method. You can do the Dacron, whichever one you prefer. Brilliant. Get yourself a little loop tire, diamond eye threader. Do it yourself. Save yourself loads of money because you get 10 in a pack rather than three or four like you get from the branded ones. I think that's brilliant. So thanks everyone. See you again on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you very, very soon.